Let's get started with cutting. With the ability to slice and dice because murder's your vice, stab someone once and then twice, heck, maybe even stab them thrice, while at the same time cutting up the target so nice that you make their balls like rice. Ooh, why did I put that in here? Users of this common ability are able to easily cut through almost anything, simply. Now we all know what cutting is. Well, we should. But for those who don't, I'm gonna make you wanna cut me with this next part. Cutting, simply put, is the action of separating a piece from something. Simple as that. Users of this power can cut whatever objects they choose by making physical contact with said object. This can be done with either a weapon or an extremely focused point of an object or body part. Heck, this can even be the special effect of another superpower. But in order to keep it simple, normally you'll see individuals who have exceptionally strong proficiencies with weapons, you know, swords, axes, being able to use this power pretty effortlessly. And just like the real world and fictional concepts that this power is based off of, being the benevolent Shay that I am, I need to warn you guys that going around and cutting others against their will is a crime. So I wouldn't advise using this power willy nilly. I just thought you guys should know that. Trust me, you'll cause way more problems than you'll fix. In fact, avoid all that nonsense altogether and do the Shay a favor by hitting that like and subscribe button. I can guarantee that you'll be one sharp tool afterwards. So at least do me a favor and hit that share button in order to pass that knowledge on to others slice slice if you're just here for the applications uses and or users of this power then skip ahead to this time but if you guys are ready to chop it up with the best of us <laughs> then let's do it the origins of cutting are kind of simple but not in the way that you think if i were to give the easy answer i could say that those in the past you know the before four times using primitive tools like their nails claws or even their teeth to aid in day-to-day -day life I mean, <laughs> let's face it, sometimes blunt force isn't always applicable, especially if you want to separate something into multiple pieces, just in a more precise manner than what blunt force gives you. And that is where the concept of cutting comes in. Because as a domain with its hands in so many different things, you can find this concept nearly anywhere, from warfare, construction, to fashion, cooking, grooming, medical applications, and entertainment. The list is like nearly endless. In fact, the action of cutting is so integral with human existence that it really exists in legends and mythology as like the ultimate act of problem solving or decision making. For example, the cutting of the Gordian knot is an ancient Greek legend that stated if one could untie this super matted and tangled knot that they would be destined to rule all of Asia. So in 333 BC, yeah, 333 BC, I, anyway, Alexander the Great took on the challenge, but instead of trying to untie it, he took out his sword and sliced right through it, which I guess counted as solving the problem, as the knot is no longer tied. But anyway, this concept was also found in higher beings of myth and legends as the fates of Greek mythology controlled the life fiber or life thread of each being. And when they decided it was time for it to come to an end, they would cut it and end that being's life. In addition to that, Kronos, the king of the Titans in the same Greek mythology that we were just talking about, used an unbreakable sickle to castrate his father Uranus, just in order to stop him from impregnating the earth, aka Gaia, and creating more monsters in turn. So let's get the boring part out the way. Yes, cutting is the separation or opening of a physical object into two or more portions through the application of an acutely directed force. And yes, cutting is classified as a compressive and shearing phenomenon and only occurs when the total stress generated by the cutting implement exceeds the ultimate strength of the material or the object being cut. All that really means is that in order to cut something, you need to not only have an object sharp enough to do the cut, but the material you're cutting has to be able to give way to the action of cutting. I hope I didn't repeat myself, but that's basically what I meant. So with all that being said, symbolically, cutting, like stated earlier, stands as the ultimate act of problem solving or decision making. While in most cases, the concept of cutting has a negative connotation as, you know, the act of separating something reaches in the domains of mutilation and loss of autonomy and of course separation obviously why is that important because those are some of the most common primal fears humans identify with even till today which is why cutting in most if not all forms inspire fear ranging from beheadings or being mauled by feral animals all the way down to being told not to run with scissors or 
simply just getting a little paper cut. But that's just how I think of it if I had to give a logical reasoning to why this fear is so prevalent. In some cases, the act of cutting something can be done in one singular chop process, but in most cases, it's usually done in a repeated sawing motion over the same spot over time. In some cases, this can cause rigid or imperfect edges from said cut. And because a lot of sensory nerves and blood vessels exist on the surface level of a individual skin, slice that doesn't travel all the way through doesn't really bleed or clot as much as a clean cut, leaving the nerves exposed and creating more pain to go along with it. So think about that, coupled with the fact that continuous use and movement of the hands, fingers, or whatever damaged body part you have causes wounds to reopen pretty dang on easy, which makes them take even longer to heal. So with that fact in mind, it's just pure nightmare fuel off top. But on a more positive side of the problem solving or decision making scale, cutting represents. Beheading a proven criminal is a good way to ensure that they won't continue to be a problem for you or your society, whatever way you want to look at it, as well as controlling the length of something that continuously grows like plants or hair or materials used for construction. Even the action of separating or splitting atoms can provide massive amounts of usable energy if one had a way to harness it. But getting back into this concept as a superpower, when this power is normally portrayed, it's usually not used for anything else other than separating objects. You really can't get any more simpler than that. This power when shown, and let's be honest, it'll always be shown, will be portrayed in any way you can imagine. But it'll normally accompany the absurdly sharp blade, you know, a weapon that can cut through anything because it's just that dang sharp. Or they can go the way of magical enhancement, technological augmentation, or other types of plot relevance required to slice and dice to your heart's content. The real reason that this power is superior to real life cutting is that in our world, cutting usually leaves rough, horrible wounds. So severing arms, legs, or the neck of an individual is actually very difficult to do, requiring either immense brute strength or significant time to saw at the wound, which is kind of weird if the target's alive, but... And contrary to what they show you in popular culture, cutting anything at an angle is extremely difficult and extremely visible, meaning the target will know that you cut them, you know, thanks to gravity and blood pressure. The funny thing about this power is that it plays a kind of rock, paper, scissors role with other force-based attacks. For example, someone who's resistant to blunt or concussive force usually carries the property of being able to absorb or spread the impact over uh, the targeted surface area, which, you know, can nullify or reduce the incoming attack blunt attack. Examples of these are substances like rubber or plastic, but those mentioned substances or others usually share very similar properties and in turn are usually vulnerable to piercing or cutting attacks because the force behind such an attack isn't distributed and are much more focused into a single point. Common tropes with this power involve the high speed slice that looks like the cutter barely moved, the godlike swordsman, you know, the guy who can do anything as long as he has a sword in his hand, razored wire, which if we're being honest, really only has one use, and weapons that have been sharpened to a single atom that allows them to cut through things like energy or light. But speaking in terms of the elements, they're separating things through high temperatures, using speed or strength to create pressure to slice objects, which can be done with water or wind, separating molecules on an atomic level via portals or other spatial or dimensional powers. You can even find users of long nails or claws dipping their fingers into this power. It really is endless. Normally, users of this power will range the gauntlet in personality, but normally from what I've seen, they're pretty direct and exact in how they approach situations, and that's them at their most positive. But the more unhinged users will delight in the act of cutting and build their entire personality around it. Being more chaotic and detached, they just want to slice things up, they don't really care where or how. If they don't possess any scars themselves as evidence of what they like to get into, then they surely don't mind giving them to others, so just expect a lot of carnage with a power like this. Now with the power to cut things, <laughs> comes the natural ability to actually put out enough force in order to slice through things that a normal member of your species couldn't with enhanced strike. And I would be extremely remiss if I forgot to add that with the previous application, cutting power is not only determined by the force outputted, but also how sharp the object is. So obviously finer edge objects slice better than blunted ones. So let's add sharpness manipulation to this list as it just makes sense. 
Now with the given of enhanced force and sharp edge creation, a user of this power can focus their cutting power into a specific point and pierce through almost any sort of substance or form of defense via impaling. If you can focus this slicing power and emit it from your hand, you'll effectively turn them into cutting weapons with razor hand. Or the inverse, focus your power of separation and emit it from a lower half of your body, turning them into cutting weapons via razor foot. Well, since you can use your body parts to slice and dice, why not kick it up a notch and cut a target in half in one slice, either vertically or horizontally. No matter what direction you do it in, you're going to be making one person two with bisection. If you use that same ability, but let's just say on something more animal shaped, then you can separate what constitutes for their head from what constitutes as their body, which still technically makes one person two with decapitation. You want to affect the environment in a grander manner than before? Then just target the local environment, aka the ground, and split the surface of it in two, creating a deep long fissure, and as an added bonus, anything caught within the path of that cut is likely to be bisected with fissure creation. If you see yourself as a professional hedge trimmer and want to be able to, I don't know, either shape what you cut or reduce what you cut into much finer slices of its uh, original state, then one slice isn't gonna cut it. <laughs> Get it? Cut it? <laughs> God, I'm a loser. So if one slice is lonely and two are considered a pair, then keep it going and turn those pair of slices into a crowd with three and then a group with four or more by using multi slash. If the user's speed and strength are great enough, then they can create massive pressure to slice objects via the medium of air with razor wind. But what if you want more versatility, like being able to maul or carve up targets in the air, or at least a good distance in front of you, then project a unique separation force that doesn't use any other mediums like air, water, or even pressure outward that'll carve through anything in its path with slash projection. Normally, this is gonna be your typical manner of long distance attacking with this power, just an FYI. From there, the user can cut through absolutely anything and everything which absolutely nothing can defend from or against. It doesn't matter if the target is immortal, invulnerable, or made of the hardest substances that exist in that particular medium. This cut can also reach into every plane of existence whether it be through space and time or alternative and pocket dimensions with absolute slicing. And lastly, a user at the top of their game can reach out and target concepts. What do I mean by that? Well, the user can sever anything regardless of their nature from physical objects to abstract concepts or even target without harming the accompanying objects that are attached to whatever you're trying to target in the first place. An example of that is severing body parts without damaging their functionality or severing the inside without harming the outside body, aka cutting out a soul from its body. The funny thing about this power, as a conceptual attack, which is one of the highest level of attacks that can exist, this ability really can't be stopped by any physical defense or physical barrier via severing. And there you have it, cutting in a nutshell. An extremely powerful and harmful ability that has dozens of forms and uses, but unless you plan on specking in the god tier applications of this power, you're not going to get too far in regards to handling certain threats, if that makes sense. Like stated before, this is mostly a physical ability, so it all comes down to are you sharper than what you're trying to cut. Other than that, this is a madly offensive power, so you really won't be seeing it used for defense, although it can because you know the saying, a good offense means a good defense. And like with most abilities, the user's own strength, weakness, and knowledge will determine how far they get with this power. And now, with all that out of the way, it's time to place this ability on the scale. Cutting is exactly what it sounds like. Nothing more, nothing less. I already said all I can about this power. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, the Shea scaling system gives this power a soul-separating 6. This power isn't really necessary, but at the same time, it's not completely unnecessary. It just exists. So, there. 
Thanks for watching. You guys think of any more applications for this power, jot it down in the comment section. If you're tired of talking about the same old powers I've done before, then jump ahead in line and join my channel membership, where for only $5.99 a month, you'll be able to not only watch the complete video unedited because of YouTube's random copyright, but also future videos that you guys have requested numerous times in the comment section, but I just haven't made public yet, such as uh, these heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. So click now and join if you don't want to wait. If not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.